Good morning and welcome to the swearing-in ceremony for the Sarasota Police Department. My name is Chief Bernadette DePino and I'm honored to recognize and swear in three new police officers today. Uh, it's always an exciting day for our police department to add additional personnel that are going to be out in the community keeping people safe. Um, this room that we're in has family members from the three police officers. We're going to be on Facebook Live, so all of you know that eventually that we will be taping this and sending it out so people that aren't able to attend because of COVID can watch us and uh, have this documented. So welcome to everybody, to the family and friends, and, and uh, please feel free at any time to come up and take photographs. This ceremony is just as much about you as it is about the officers we're about to, to swear in. And uh, so remember, it's going to be on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at the conclusion of this uh, ceremony. So let me recognize a few of the dignitaries that are here. I've got four of the command staff members. Uh, Deputy Chief Pat Robinson couldn't attend today, but he sends his warm regards. We've got Captain John Todd from the Criminal Investigation Division. Captain Jim Reeser from our um, Support Services Division. Captain Rex Troche from our uh, Professional Standards Division, and Captain Dimitri Constantopoulos from our Patrol Division. So um, normally we have people from the City Manager's Office, and I know the City Manager likes to attend these and speak, and he sends his regard and best wishes and good luck to the police officers. So um, at this point, let's invite uh, our three officers to come in. Let's give them a round of applause. These are the real dignitaries that are here. So, if you would all join me, um, rising, and uh, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance to salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You all may be seated. So as I told you earlier, today's a really special day. We get to add three new officers to our workforce and swear them in in front of their family. We wish their friends and, and all the rest of SPD could be here. Uh, but amidst COVID, uh, that's not possible. But again, you guys are going to be on Facebook eventually. And so we say hello to all your family and friends that are watching from home and from far away, and we're so glad that you could join us. Just to get here today, uh, and the family knows this very well, there's so many obstacles that you had to overcome to get here. It's not easy to become a Sarasota police officer. Just to get into my office, you have to go through two of our important people, our recruiters, Kate Hall and Jack Carter, who are also here to help you celebrate and to recognize your accomplishment. But to get through those two and then to get up to my office, there's a long process. You have to go through a significant background. You have to go through physicals and polygraphs and go through the police academy, which, as family and friends know, is not an easy thing. It's long. It takes a lot of stress and studying in order to accomplish that. Um, and then you have to go through agency-specific training. We've got our training division here, and I thank our training officers for doing such a great job of bringing uh, you up to even a higher level than once you left the police academy. So I'm really proud of you. And then you come to see me. And I get to interview it and see if you are a good fit for our police department. And uh, so far, Jack and Kate have brought us outstanding candidates. And I'm proud of both of you and appreciate all the hard work and dedication. This is actually Kate's last swearing in ceremony. Can we give her a round of applause for her hard work? <laughs> dedication and while this ceremony is not about her I do need to recognize her hard work she came to SPD a number of years ago and uh, we needed to fill our ranks and she was filling our ranks at a rate that much larger agencies uh, usually fill their ranks and she did so in a professional way brought us great individuals and uh, 
I really appreciate your dedication and your service to us and to the community, and I wish you well on your, I don't know which retirement this is, but your next retirement uh, and, and happiness and blessings to you and your family. So again, let's give her another round of applause. Now, as I said earlier also that, you know, this is also about your families. You know, a lot of people think, wow, these officers worked really hard to get here, but there's always people around you that help you with your success. They help you deal with stress, and that's some of the people that are in this room today. So I thank you all so much for raising the caliber of men that are in this room right now or helping to keep them sane and helping them deal with stress and all the hard work that they're putting up with because you live it through them. And, uh, and I assure you that we're going to make sure that they are safe, that we give them all the tools that they need so they come home to you every single night. They've got a great police department that's backing them up. The men and women of the Sarasota Police Department are the highest caliber. And uh, we just want you to be reassured, while this is a very dangerous job and we see what's going on in the national narrative, I assure you the men and women of the Sarasota Police Department are outstanding individuals who are ethical and work hard every day to keep our community safe. And they do it with best practices and best standards and the best training and the best equipment. So um, uh, while you're always gonna be worrying and I hope you continue to pray for them, please know that they've got great backup and they've got a great organization that they're gonna be working with, just to try to reassure you a little bit. So it gives me again great honor to introduce these candidates when I call your name, if you wouldn't mind standing up you can take your mask off and face uh, your loved ones because you are uh, socially distanced. Faced um, Ian K. <laughs> Nicholas Lacquadara. And Andrew Van Dyke. Again, let's give him a round of applause. Okay, you guys can turn around and have a seat. Throw your masks back, back on. So again, I've got to thank our uh, training division that's in the back. We've got Sergeant Dan Weinsberg. Um, Officer Sean Carter's not here, but we've got Officer Matthew Hughes and um, Administrative Specialist uh, Tina Shumway. You guys do a great job with our officers and I appreciate everything you're doing, especially under conditions where it's hard to get people into training, make sure we're social distancing, but thank you for your commitment and uh, again, bringing out some great police officers. So I'm gonna ask all the candidates right now to rise and uh, turn back around and face the, the audience and we're gonna do the um, oath of office. I'm also going to ask any sworn um, police officers in the room to also swear and reaffirm your oath at this time. So please stand and uh, turn around and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name, I, Bernadette DePino, hereby upon my oath, hereby upon my oath, solemnly swear that I will, solemnly swear that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, uphold, protect, and defend, uphold, protect, and defend the constitutions of the state of Florida, the constitutions of the state of Florida, and the United States of America, and the United States of America. I further swear that I will, I further swear that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, enforce the ordinances enforce the ordinances, laws, rules, and regulations, laws, rules, and regulations, as enacted by the city of Sarasota, Florida, as enacted by the city of Sarasota, Florida, the state of Florida, the state of Florida, and the United States of America, and the United States of America. I will at all times, I will at all times, maintain and conduct myself, maintain myself, in the matter befitting a police officer, Fitting a police officer of the city of Sarasota, the city of Sarasota, upon which I am now about to enter, upon which now I'm about to enter. Congratulations. <laughs> now I will say.
say if any of the civilians in the room took that oath, you're not official. Okay, you're not sworn. You don't get, get you're not sworn. So, um, uh, officers, you can now turn around and sit down. And at this point, it's um, a, a very special time in the ceremony. This is something that's near and dear to me because this is again about family. And I've been very fortunate through my career, whenever I got promoted, that I would have my dad uh, pin my badge on for me. My dad was a police officer, so was my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and now my daughter's also a police officer. And I was lucky that she was able to pin my badge on me when I uh, came here to the city of Sarasota. So I think it's important uh, as part of you getting your badge pinned on you that you select a family member or somebody that you care about very much to pin that badge on for the first time. And uh, I hope that when you're pinning the badge on your officer that you're thinking about things like, may this badge always remain as shiny as it is today, and may you always have the safety of uh, the other officers that also wear the badge to keep you protected all the days of your career, and that you wear this badge with honor and integrity and pride all the days of your career. So we're going to start off with uh, the first officer, um, uh, Ian Kay, and he's going to be pinned by his mom, Joanna Luciano. So could you please come on up? Do you want to stand up and turn around and face everyone? Also attending are his stepfather, Anthony Luciano, his grandmother, Mickey Kay, his grandfather, Jerry Kay, his father, Jonathan Kay, and his stepmother, Jennifer Baker, and uh, unable to attend, um, but I'm sure uh, going to be watching this later, is uh, Danielle Luciano. So. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you again for raising such a fine caliber officer. And let me tell you a little bit about him. He's 25 years old. He was raised in Sarasota, Florida. He's the eldest of two. He graduated from Sarasota Military Academy in 2013. He graduated from the Florida Atlantic University's Honor College in Jupiter, Florida with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, law, and society. He grew up in Sarasota and has always wanted a career where he could help others be physically active and apply his professional drive and dive and training skills. He previously worked as a public safety officer at Sapphire Valley from 2016 to 2018 and was a dive master at Scuba Quest from 2018 to 2019. He received his LEO training from the Suncoast Technical College Criminal Justice Academy and graduated in June of 2020. His career goals included joining the dive team and to have a long, distinguished career with SPD. His hobbies include diving, fishing, boating, hiking, and collecting World War I and World War II era firearms and memorabilia. Please join me in congratulating Officer K. Thank you. You may have your seats again. Thank you very much. Oh, you go ahead and pin it on him. Go ahead, sure, no problem. I thought you were pinning while I was talking. Sorry, no problem. Congratulations. <laughs> so next is Officer Nicholas Nacodera. Please come on up. And he's going to be pinned by his girlfriend, Samantha Seymour. He would like to send a special thank you to his family and friends that are not able to be in attendance today but who have been instrumental in his life and chosen career path. And uh, we miss you here, and I know he misses you here, and you should be very proud of him, and I know you are. Thank you so much for raising such a fine caliber person. We're lucky to have him in our department. So he's 26 years old, and he was born in Suffern, New York. And you can start pinning him while I'm talking. Um, he graduated from North Rockland High School in Thales, New York in 2012. He received his Associate in Science and Criminal Justice in 2014 
and he's one of four children. After witnessing the 9-11 attacks at seven years old and experiencing the impact firsthand, he knew from that moment on all he ever wanted to be was a law enforcement officer. He enlisted at the age of 20 to the United States Marine Corps and was sent to basic training in Paris Island. He served from January 2015 through December of 2019. He was a non-commissioned officer in charge of the Air Traffic Control Maintenance Division headquarters and the headquarters squadron at the Marine Corps Air Station in New River, North Carolina. He also served at the Marine Corps uh, Air Control Squadron Four Detachment Bravo in uh, Equani, hold on, I had it right earlier, Barb. Um, uh, Iwakuni, is that close? Is that good? All right, Japan. He was discharged honorably as a sergeant. He received his LEO training from the Manatee Technical College, Criminal Justice Academy, and graduated in June of 2020. He aspires to become a member of the K-9 SWAT and Marine units and looks forward to hopefully one day becoming a sergeant. He enjoys hunting, fishing, weightlifting, football, and spending time with his family. Congratulations to Officer Laquadera. So Congratulations. Next is Officer Andrew Van Dyke, and he, um, he's going to be pinned by his mentor, Don uh, Delano. And also attending are his grandmother and his girlfriend. I'll tell you about them in a second. His grandmother, uh, Elaine Hasher, is here, and his girlfriend, Alex uh, Spatero, is here. Uh, Officer Van Dyke is 29 years old, and he is originally from New Jersey. He attended uh, Montclair State University and graduated with a BA degree with a major in political science with a concentration in international relations and a minor in international security and diplomacy and public administration. He served in the United States Marine Corps from 2010 to 2014 as an infantry team leader. He served one humanitarian mission to Japan and South Korea and one combat mission in Afghanistan. He is an OEF, an Operation Enduring Freedom veteran. He assisted with the New York United Nations Headquarters 72nd General Assembly as an intern with the United States State Department Diplomatic Service Security. He was a professional bodyguard from 2014 to 2019. He received his LEO training from the St. Peter Criminal Justice Academy in April of 2020 and he was honored at the, as the class leader and was selected to give the class speech. Please join me in congratulating Officer Van Dyke. <laughs> and his, his first assignment, he's gonna be a bodyguard for the chief for the rest of uh, my career. So, so congratulations, you can have a seat. It's so special to, to be able to talk about these officers and, and then see their person that has selected to pin their badge on them. It's not as easy as you thought it was. It's, uh, it's not, not easy pinning that badge on. But it's quite an honor, and, uh, and I hope all of you feel really proud to be selected to, to do that. It's quite a, a momentous occasion. And, um, and at this point, I want to share something with you that I have done since I was a chief coming up on almost 18 years ago. Uh, in recognizing officers with a DePino family tradition. When my dad was a police officer in Baltimore, Maryland, um, he and my grandfather attended a, a, a mission and uh, was by the Knights of Columbus. And at the end, they gave them all St. Michael's medals. And it was a very unique medal. It was flat, it had a police officer, and it had St. Michael with his arm wrapped around um, him. And my dad carried that in, with him uh, through his career. And he always felt it kept him a little safe. It was kind of a memento. And because um, St. Michael is a patron saint of police officers to keep evil away and help defend them against the battles of evil, which is what police officers do every single day. And uh, he, he just felt it kept him safe. But when I became a police officer, he gave me that medal. And it was quite significant for me. I carried it around with me all the days of my career until my daughter became a police officer. And then I gave her that medal. 
and I believe that she uh, has benefited from that use also, and it's kept her safe uh, all the days of her career. And in that tradition, um, uh, I, over the years, have, and wherever I travel to, and they have St. Michael medals for sale, I'll pick one up and I'll get the local priest, and in some instances, the Pope in the Vatican to actually bless the, the St. Michael's medal um, uh, to keep our officers safe. So I would be honored if you would accept this St. Michael's medal on behalf of the tradition of the DePino family and that you keep it with you all the days of your career and that it keep you safe, keep you blessed um, and healthy all the days of your career. Um, so I'd be honored, and again, if you would accept that. Thank you so much. So that concludes the um, official ceremony, but I just want to give you some uh, closing parting words. The occupation that you're about to enter right now is an honorable one. It is one that I have loved coming up on 35 years in September. Um, I've loved this job since the day I started it. I actually wanted to be a police officer ever since I was a little girl and because of my dad. Also, my grandfather. Um, uh, it's one where you can make a difference in someone's life every single day. Um, it's so purposeful, and I encourage you to every day, you know, go out, wave to people, engage with people in the community, and realize that while there are a lot of voices out there that seem to get a lot of publicity about the negatives of law enforcement, that's such a small voice compared to the vast support that you have uh, from people all over our country who need and depend on law enforcement to keep them safe every single day. What you're doing is significant. It's important. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you to be joining our force. We need you out on the streets. Uh, we need you to keep our community safe. Just your presence deters crime. Just your presence makes people feel safe and secure. And you have an opportunity again every day to make a difference and you may never know that you've made that difference. When my grandfather died, he was uh, 95 years old, and at the funeral, we didn't really think a lot of people would show up because he was 95. But uh, my dad and my grandmother and I were lined up there, and we had so many people that came in that we found had, had really been impacted by my grandfather. We heard stories about how he had coached them uh, for marriage counseling and that they were still married and they were happy. Um, we had another one that came in and said, if it wasn't for your grandfather, I never would have studied and got promoted. And we had story after story. And after everybody left, my grandmother turned to my dad and I and said, you know, I never heard any of those stories. I don't think your grandfather even recognized the impact that he actually had on people's lives. And I want you to think about that. You may never get a thank you. You may never hear someone saying, I really appreciate what you did. Um, but I will tell you right here and right now, there's so many people you will be impacting in your life and you may never hear back from them. But every once in a while, you may get recognized with an award or a kind letter from someone or somebody just says thank you for, for what you did. And sometimes it's the small stuff, sometimes it's the big stuff. You just never know. But just know that you are making a difference in this world just by doing the job that you are. So stay focused, stay committed, do the right thing, and let me be the first one to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this job. Thank you for being willing to sacrifice yourself, your family, your personal time in order to keep our society and our community the great country it is. We live in the greatest country in the world. We live in the greatest city in the world. There's so many opportunities for you. Please take advantage of them. Continue to learn. Continue to grow your whole career. And my wish for you is that you are as happy 35 years into your career as you are today, the first year of your career. And if you have that kind of a career, then you'll be a success. You'll be satisfied, and then you'll be able to retire and know you're leaving a legacy behind you of all the good work that you've done. So congratulations. I'm proud of each and every one of you. Welcome to the SPD.